Mesoamerica is famous for its ancient civilizations, which built megalithic stepped pyramids and created endless amounts of art. We've all heard about the Aztecs. Their society gave women equal economic rights to men, which is great. But they also had a penchant for human sacrifice, which is not so great. We've all heard about the Mayans and their terrifyingly misleading calendar that had everyone in a panic in 2012. But in this video, I'm talking about the oldest high culture in Mesoamerica, which was the Olmec civilization. Of course, there are loads of books and articles on the Olmecs. Their society was a complicated one, and it left behind a lot of monuments, much of which have been excavated and researched. So I can't go into everything there is to know about them. Instead, I'm concentrating on a few of the more mysterious and remarkable aspects of their culture, as well as looking at some recent research papers on their civilization. One of these is about the possibility that the Olmecs ingested hallucinogenic mushrooms, and the other is about incredible rock art that has been attributed to them. So before we get into that, here's an overview of the Olmecs, which helps to give us a bit of context. Let's talk about their monuments, their colossal heads, their jaguar iconography, and their rituals. The Olmec civilization first emerged around 1600 BCE in what are now the Mexican states of Veracruz and Tabasco on the southern coastal plain of the Gulf of Mexico. Their civilization has been divided into three phases by scholars, the early formative, the middle formative and the late formative. The name Olmec comes from the Nahuatl language of the later Aztecs and means rubber people, which probably refers to the rubber balls they used in games and the fact that their heartland had a lot of rubber trees in it. They are classed as a Bronze Age society and were contemporary with the New Kingdom of Ancient Egypt and the Mycenaean civilization in the Aegean, amongst other relatively sophisticated cultures that were emerging from farming communities in different regions at that time. There's evidence that their society was hierarchical with an elite class. The Olmecs traded across the region, importing raw materials such as obsidian and jade to make luxury items. Jaguar symbolism stands out amongst the Olmecs. A common motif is a weird jaguar with a baby face, a V-shaped cleft above its head and a toothless mouth. This is probably the earliest representation of a local deity that morphed in appearance with later Mesoamerican cultures but continue to be worshipped. The exact deity is debated though. No names of Olmec deities are known, only deities of the later Mesoamerican cultures. This artifact known as a Kunz axe depicts a weird jaguar typical of Olmec symbolism. It's thought that the Olmecs were the inventors of the Mesoamerican ball game that was played for thousands of years by different cultures and eventually gave rise to proper ball courts, the remains of which can still be seen today at numerous archaeological sites. The earliest rubber balls were recovered from a sacrificial bog of the Olmecs alongside ritual offerings. Scholars know that the ball game had ritual significance to later Mesoamerican cultures such as the Mayans and the Aztecs because this was documented and many of the ball courts were decorated with mythological scenes. So considering the fact that the Olmecs deposited their rubber balls alongside votive offerings, it seems that this ritual element originated with them. They also created figurines of ball players and one very early ball court has been found at the San Lorenzo site. La Venta, San Lorenzo, Tenochtitlan, Laguna de los Theros and Tres Apotes are the main Olmec sites with proper urban designs. San Lorenzo was the first large-scale town to appear and is situated in an area with fertile agricultural land. Archaeologists think that the elites lived in earthen buildings on the top of clay mounds, whereas the rest of the populace inhabited thatched wattle and daub houses. The majority of the colossal heads so far discovered came from San Lorenzo. I'll discuss those later. Basalt thrones, as well as sculptures of felines, birds, and strange creatures were also excavated from the site. When San Lorenzo started to decline for reasons that are unknown, the site of La Venta took center stage amongst the Olmecs. It's located on an alluvial plain, unlike the fertile region inhabited by San Lorenzo. It's thought that La Venta was a ceremonial site, since no domestic dwellings have been found there. It was in use for around 500 years from 900 BCE, and its buildings were made from earth and clay rather than megalithic stones. However, that doesn't make their construction simple by any means. Tons of earth were used to create many of the structures, which wouldn't have been easy. The complex of ritual buildings, monuments and altars at La Venta is oriented eight degrees west of north. 
further work done on the alignment of its main monument, the Great Pyramid, as well as analysis of the etchings on a square jade plate, have led scholars to conclude that Mesoamerican astronomical concepts, well known from the later classical period, had their origins with the Olmecs. Complex C is known as the Great Pyramid, a 34 metre high conical mound which is thought to have been a stepped rectangular pyramid originally. This has yet to be excavated. Complex A is made up of mounds and plazas. There are many basalt columns and several formal tombs. However, what's really notable about Complex A is the series of ritual offerings found buried there. Humongous serpentine blocks, polished mirrors, jade artifacts and detailed mosaics were all purposefully deposited underground, most likely as some sort of a ritual. I find this so strange. Ritual deposits are fairly commonplace in the ancient world, but the fact the Omics created mosaics and then buried them so they were removed from view is mind-blowing. This isn't the only example of something fairly elaborate in the ancient world other than an artifact being purposefully buried. I'm collecting a list of these. There are also a couple of examples in Malta, such as a small polygonal wall. Complex C is also thought to have the earliest depiction of a feathered serpent in the region. This is a relief sculpture known as Monument 19. You've probably seen this on quite a few YouTube channels and lots of books because there are researchers who think it depicts an ancient astronaut. I don't think that, but it's certainly an intriguing sculpture. It's also worth mentioning that the iconography does resemble other ancient relief carvings around the world. Complex B is made up of a plaza surrounded by platforms and monuments and was probably for large-scale ritual events. Basalt altars were also excavated from Leventa. Just as with the colossal heads which I'll get to, the basalt stone was transported over long distances. Altars 4 and 5 have the most detailed carvings. Altar 4 has a relief carving of a figure wearing a headdress, either sat in a cave or in the mouth of an animal. The figure holds a rope which runs around the base of the altar. Altar 5 also has a central figure wearing a headdress, but this time holding what's been referred to as a weir jaguar baby. The symbolism of these carvings isn't properly understood. It's also not known if these huge basalt blocks actually had the function of an altar, or were thrones or something else. Tres Abotas dates to around the same time as Leventa, but grew substantially during the Epi-Olmec or post-Olmec period. Although this later culture was descended from the earlier Olmecs, there were marked differences. They didn't have the sophisticated artistic and construction skills that the Olmecs had, but they did have a fully-fledged writing system. I'm more interested in the earlier Olmecs because less is known about them, and I love the mystery. Why was this earlier culture in many ways more complex than the later ones? Tres Apotis is made up of earthen mounds and platforms, just as at San Lorenzo and La Venta. More than a hundred have been identified by archaeologists. Some of these are fairly early in date, but others were built during the Epi-Olmec period. Although experts are certain that the Olmecs had a hierarchical society with powerful leaders and priests, they aren't sure exactly how it was structured. Due to the humidity of the region and the acidity of the soil, almost no skeletal remains have been preserved, so archaeologists cannot learn more about the Olmecs from their burials. The 17 colossal heads constitute one of the most well-known features of the Olmec civilization. These sculptures made from basalt blocks are between 1 and 3.5 meters in height, weigh between 6 and 50 tons, and all wear some kind of a headdress, which looks like a protective helmet. The basalt stones were transported over long distances, and just like with many ancient cultures, it's not known exactly how the Olmecs did this. Strangely, the most ornately carved heads are the earliest ones. Over time, they became more stylized. The heads are naturalistic portrayals of men and were excavated from the ceremonial complexes, so probably played a role in whatever rituals took place there. One head has remnants of plaster and red paint on it, so experts think they may all have been decorated originally. Ten of the heads come from San Lorenzo, four from La Venta, two from Tres Apotas, and one from La Cobata. It's debatable as to what they represent. They could be kings, priests, warriors, or players in the ball game that was probably invented by the Olmecs and adopted by subsequent Mesoamerican cultures. Life-size jadeite face masks are other carvings of humans that are a pretty famous feature of the Olmec civilization, albeit quite a lot smaller than the colossal heads. 
Evidence for the Olmecs having had a written language comes from several sources. Individual glyphs etched onto monuments may be proof of a writing system. However, the only source with a substantial amount of inscriptions is the Cascajal block, a serpentine stone with 62 glyphs carved into it. This undeciphered script is etched into a small stone block that's 36 by 21 centimetres. The glyphs are different to those of subsequent Mesoamerican writing systems, as is the layout of the text, which appears to run horizontally rather than vertically. Some of the glyphs look like animals and plants, whereas others are abstract symbols. There's been a lot of research into the Cascajal block. Some experts think it's a hoax. Others think it's definitely an Olmec artifact, but is not proof of a writing system. There are many scholars who think the glyphs are individual packets of information but others who think they could be decorative motifs or magical symbols. If the Cascajal block is evidence of the earliest Mesoamerican script, then its eventual decipherment would provide vital information on the mysterious Olmecs. If you're interested in learning more about undeciphered scripts, I did a video on some others around the world. Do undeciphered scripts hold the key to the ancient past? A lot of research has been done into the use of hallucinogenic substances in shamanic cultures. There's also been a lot of informed speculation that the mystery schools of ancient Greece and various other ancient cultures worldwide employ some sort of intoxicating elixirs for ceremonial and ritual reasons, as well as healing. It's known that psychoactive substances were used by various pre-Columbian Mesoamerican cultures, both indigenous and foreign written accounts, in addition to sculptures and relief carvings, provide evidence for the use of hallucinogens amongst the Mayans and the Aztecs. The Mayans used these substances to enter an altered state for communication with deities in order to tell the future. This ancient pharmacopoeia includes many different types of hallucinogen. Researchers have found evidence for the consumption of 54 kinds of entheogenic mushrooms amongst several ancient Mesoamerican cultures. The Mayans ingested a beverage called Bauke, made up of bark mixed with honey derived from bees, fed on a type of morning glory containing ergine. Peyote, a type of cactus, was also used because it contains many hallucinogenic alkaloids, including mescaline. It was also used as a topical wound and sting treatment due to its antibacterial properties. But evidence from the earliest high culture in Mesoamerica, the Olmecs, isn't as abundant, but it is there. Remains of the Sonoran desert toad, Bufo alvarius, have been found at Olmec ceremonial sites, along with ceramic figurines of them. There are also depictions of these toads on pottery vessels. This toad secretes psychoactive substances, such as Bufo tenin, so experts think it was ingested as part of ritual ceremonies. A paper in the Asia... Pacific Journal of Medical Toxicology looks at the symbolism present in one ancient Olmec mask and suggests it may depict an hallucinogenic mushroom as well as the effects of it. This isn't the first time this particular features of this mask have been noticed. Various and books and articles over the years have discussed it. The ceramic mask is split into two halves, with one side representing half a human head and the other side representing half a jaguar head. It's currently housed in the Museo Internazionale della Ceramica in Fienza, Italy. The human appears to be wearing a hat which is shaped like a mushroom and also has dots marked on it similar to the species Amanita muscaria. The iconography suggests the transformation of a human soul from hungry and greedy to serene and spiritual, probably facilitated by the use of psychoactive mushrooms as depicted in the hat. So it's entirely possible that the use of psychoactive substances goes back to the earliest urbanized culture of Mesoamerica, probably even earlier than that, and that the Olmecs saw this ritualistic consumption of hallucinogens as so important they documented the process in sculptural form. And that's true of the mask and the toad figurines and the depictions of toads on pottery vessels. A recent paper by Florida State University Libraries documents further research that's being carried out on cave paintings at the Oxtotitlan cave in Guerrero, Mexico. These paintings have been attributed by experts to the Olmec civilization based on their iconography. This research is set to be published in a series of journals. The research team carried out radiocarbon and calcium oxalate dating on the murals, as well as analyzing the pigments used to create them and documenting each image with photographs, videos, and precision drawings. 
a mixture of polychromatic and red paintings are found in the cave and have been studied since their discovery in the 1960s. Documenting the murals required scaffolding, so it's certain that the Olmecs would have used something similar in order to create these cave paintings. The murals are a mix of serpent, jaguar and avian iconography along with geometric signs. On the rock above the entrance to the grotto, a lord is painted wearing a raptor headdress and wings. It's in a location surrounded by vegetation and where water falls down the cliff's face. So it was probably chosen for its connection to the underworld and earthly processes. The latest research also documented murals only recently discovered when modern graffiti was removed. The whole site has numerous paintings, some incredibly elaborate. To think the ancient Mesoamericans went to the trouble to erect scaffolding and create detailed murals shows this must have been a meaningful endeavour for them. As various books have suggested over the years, including Supernatural by Graham Hancock, a new updated edition of which has just been published called Visionary, The Mysterious Origins of Human Consciousness, cave paintings which have an extremely long history going all the way back to the Upper Paleolithic and are present in many different regions, may have depicted what was seen by shamans on vision quests whilst in an altered state of consciousness. I can't imagine why the Olmecs would go to such extreme efforts unless they saw some sort of magical or spiritual significance to the process of creating these murals in locations that were difficult to reach. But whether that means they were documenting hallucinogenic journeys to the underworld, we don't know. Just as with the megalith builders, I always wonder why cave art is found in so many different regions and cultures separated by vast geographic distances and thousands of years. The latter could be explained by archetypal visions seen in altered states of consciousness, but the former I still think means there must have been a meaningful connection between ancient Neolithic settlements. So there's an insight into the Olmecs, a culture that left behind vast monuments, lots of beautiful, detailed, and in some cases, colossal sculptures, and maybe even a written language. They emerged somewhat fully formed from early farming communities like many ancient sophisticated cultures. Where their skills came from is not certain, but if it was an organic evolution over time, then it appears to have been rather quick. The Olmecs created the rituals and ideas that were to underpin later Mesoamerican cultures, and they also appear to have had a lot of astronomical knowledge. There's still so much to learn about them, but luckily they left behind many tantalising clues. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you don't already. I'm also on Patreon. The link is below. Come and find me on Instagram and Twitter where I post regularly and take a look at my website, megalithhunter.com.